Hello, I hope you've enjoyed the midterm and are ready to start the second half of the class. We're going to begin the second half of the class with one of the most enigmatic specimens in the human fossil record. Throughout the fossil record, there are a few fossils that simply defy easy and obvious interpretation. The specimen we'll be talking about today is one of those. WT17000, a specimen from West Turkana that we'll talk about today, however, despite being very complex in terms of what it might represent, seems to start the beginning of an interesting side story in our human evolutionary past, the evolution of the robust Australopithecines. These are fossils that aren't, or at least most of them, direct ancestors to living humans. They're an evolutionary side branch that coexisted perhaps with the earliest members of our lineage for as many as a million years. So they're an important comparison for thinking about our evolutionary past, and even for interpreting the earliest remains of our genus, the genus Homo, which we'll start talking about next week. Now to begin our story, we're going to start, as I said, with ER 1470. Again, this site and this specimen are from the West Turkana region of northern Kenya, so we're up here west of Lake Turkana. The specimen, WT17000 itself, is sometimes referred to as the black skull in part because the fossilization has created a dark stain on this specimen. And as we look at this specimen, a number of features immediately stick out. The first, if we look at lateral view, for example, is this really dramatic sagittal crest, and a sagittal crest that's particularly posteriorly located on the skull. It's almost as if there's a big sail on the back of the skull. That corresponds also with a dramatically flaring zygomatic arch that extends into a nuchal crest. So if we look at the specimen anteriorly, you can see these huge, flaring, almost billowing zygomatics. This specimen has enormously large zygomatics that stick out incredibly laterally from the specimen. So again, if we imagine a masseter muscle here, this is a huge angle for the masseter muscle to act in the jaw. So there's a really powerful masticatory apparatus in this specimen. Corresponding to that, what's preserved to the face is very much shoveled out. It's almost as depression. You can see in the lateral view how the zygomatic comes anterior to actually the primary trajectory of the primary profile of the face of the specimen. So it has this really dished out face. There's also a huge amount of prognathism associated with this large upper jaw. Looking at it in a posterior view, we can see the sagittal crest and nuchal crest and the compound crest that they form in dramatic profile. And you can see the huge space that's available, especially on the posterior portion of the skull for the temporalis muscle. This was an individual that had huge, enormous chewing capabilities given the preservation of the skull. It almost looks like an ape, like we might imagine a gorilla in some ways. And indeed, if there was one specimen that I wanted to designate in the fossil record as a likely hybrid between early hominins and some form of existing ape, this would probably be the specimen that I would go with. That, however, is purely speculative and not something that's really easy or feasible to test as a hypothesis, but it indicates how strange in some ways this specimen is. If we look at it in the inferior view, you can see, unfortunately, we don't have well-preserved dentition for this specimen. We only have the roots broken off. But you can see that these are very large teeth. You can see if you measure the dimensions of the root cavities, basically, what's preserved in the alveoli, these are huge teeth. The molars in this specimen are very large. And they indicate the beginning of perhaps this side lineage, the beginning of the robust Australopithecines. Now, this specimen itself, however, lacks many contemporary analogs. It's at about two and a half million years. Now we know that there are fossils around two and a half million years, including specimens such as STS-5, Australopithecus africanus from South Africa. But there's nothing at two and a half million years that looks quite like this. There's nothing that shows this degree of robusticity, particularly in East Africa. So while it might be the start of this lineage, it also might be one of these specimens that's sort of idiosyncratic in terms of the lack, at least at this point, of comparative material to associate it with. But whatever it is, it's indicative of a change associated with increasing masticatory capabilities. And it's the signal of the beginning of such lineages within East Africa. We'll see as we move forward this week that we have a lineage in East Africa that evolves from at least two and a half million years ago, perhaps as late as 1.2 million years of age, that has, is characterized by increasing molar dentition, increasing size of the premolars, increasing size of the jaw and the corpus structures that go along with it, increasing size of the temporalis muscle and the whole masticatory apparatus that's associated with it. In other words, characterized by huge jaws. So WT17000, otherwise known as the black skull, and sometimes referred to as Australopithecus atheopicus, is the first specimen indicative of this lineage of robust Australopithecines.